embryo development begins with fertilization. The spermatozoa enter the oocyte through the micropeel. A single spermatid releases its genetic material into the oocyte, leading to the fusion of the male and female genetic material and the formation of the zygote. With the fusion of the spermatid and oocyte cell membranes, a cortical reaction is set in motion. There are changes in the chorion and enzymes released from the cortical granules in the oocyte cytoplasm cause the separation of the oocyte cell membrane from the chorion and the establishment of the perivitrelline space. The chorion swells and lifts away from the zygote. There are changes in the non-yolk cytoplasm of the zygote. The wave of calcium release accompanying the cortical reaction causes actin microfilaments to squeeze the non-yolk cytoplasm towards one extremity of the zygote. The non-yolk cytoplasm streams to what will be the animal pole. Opposite the animal pole is the vegetal pole. The accumulation of non-yolk cytoplasm at the animal pole forms the blastodisc and its formation changes the shape of the zygote from spherical to pear-shaped. Cell division begins very soon after the formation of the zygote. Remember there is a difference between cleavage in mammalian embryos and cleavage in fish embryos. Here is a short reminder of the cleavage process in mammals. In contrast to the eggs of fish, birds and reptiles, mammalian eggs contain a relatively small amount of yolk and the zygote engages in holoblastic cleavage. The whole embryo divides to produce two separate cells. These two blastomeres divide to produce four separate cells and so on. All this occurs within the zona pellucida, so there is a compaction of the cells to produce a morella before the blastula period begins. Zebrafish eggs contain a large amount of yolk and so do not engage in holoblastic cleavage, but rather perform miroblastic cleavage. That is to say, cell division is confined to the non-yolk cytoplasm of the blastodisc. The first cell division occurs in the vertical plane of the blastodisc to produce two blastomeres at the animal pole that are incompletely separated from the yolk. The six cell divisions of the cleavage stage occur regularly at about 15 minute intervals and synchronously. The first five divisions occur in the vertical plane and in regular orientation. If we look at the embryo with a view from the animal pole, we see that the second division occurs at right angles to the plane of the first division to create four blastomeres that are incompletely cleaved from the yolk. The third division occurs along two planes at right angle to the second and parallel to the first division to create eight incompletely cleaved blastomeres at the animal pole. So now the animal pole contains a two by four array of blastomeres. The fourth cleavage division occurs in two planes at right angle to the third and parallel to the second to produce a four by four array of cells. For the first time, some cells are completely cleaved from the other cells. The complete cells are the four most central blastomeres. Note that these four cells are completely surrounded by 12 outer cells, the so-called marginal blastomeres, which are incompletely separated from the yolk. The fifth division occurs in four planes at right angle to the fourth and parallel to the first and third. Seen from the face view, the 32 cells may appear as two tiers of cells because of the curvature of the blaster disc, but these cells are still a single 4x8 array of cells. The sixth division is the first that occurs in the horizontal plane, and after this division it is the first time that some cells are completely covered by other cells. These buried cells, or deep cells, arise from one of the two daughter cells of the central blastomeres present in the previous stage. 
The other daughter cells remain superficial in the top layer, in what is now the enveloping layer. The blastula period begins at the 128 cell stage. A high mound of blastomeres appears to be a solid half ball perched on the yolk cell. The cleavage furrows are now irregular and it is difficult to follow the individual divisions that are asynchronous. At the 256 cell stage, there is a thin outer layer of the enveloping cells and many more deep cells. At the 512 cell stage, with the 10th cell division, the mid-blastular transition starts and formation of the yolk syncytial layer also starts. With the mid-blastular transition, the cell cycle lengthens and becomes asynchronous. Also, the deep cells become motile. The yolk syncytial layer is visible as a single ring around the blaster disc margin. At the oblong stage, the enveloping layer is a layer of thin outer cells. There are many deep cells that are motile and dividing asynchronously. The yolk syncytial layer is spreading beneath the blaster disc and moving away from the blaster disc. This has the effect of shortening the whole embryo as the blaster disc is compressed down on the yolk cell. The yolk syncytial layer now consists of an external yolk syncytial layer, external to the blaster disc, and an internal yolk syncytial layer that is beneath the blaster disc. At the dome stage, the internal yolk syncytial layer begins to dome up, which is a sign that Eboli has started. Eboli is the process by which the yolk syncytial layer moves towards the vegetal pole and takes with it the blastoderm so that the blastoderm spreads over the yolk cell. The development of the embryo is described by its percent eboli. The gastrula period commences at about 50% eboli. In the gastrula period, the cell movement processes of involution, convergent and extension dominate. At the shield stage, at about six hours, as involution continues at the entire margin of the blastoderm, a process of convergence commences. The deep layer cells, in addition to moving towards the blastoderm margin and involuting, they also converge towards a single position on the germ ring to accumulate to form the embryonic shield. At the embryonic shield, the involuting cells form the axial hyperblast that continues the movement of involution to stream towards the animal pole. At 90% eboli, the axial blastoderm thickens on the dorsal side rather than the ventral. At 100% eboli, the bud stage, at about 10 hours, the gastrula period is defined as ended when the eboli is complete and the tail bud has formed.